guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. And today I have a tutorial for this bikini. If you wanna see the process of me draping, patterning, and sewing this bikini for the first time, I actually have a process video for that already up on my channel. I made a little silver bikini then, but now I've created this little black bikini and a red bikini like you saw in the intro. We've perfected the pattern and I'm ready to give you a tutorial for it. So if you would like the pattern for this bikini, that is the first link down below. And you know I like to reward you for watching this video soon for being subscribed with those notification bells turned on. So you can get this bikini for 30% off until tomorrow at midnight if you use the code BIKINI. And you can find more information about my favorite sewing equipment in this video description. I would say that this is a beginner friendly pattern as long as you understand how to sew knits. So that's why I've divided this video up a little bit. So the first few minutes of this video after the intro is all about how to sew knits. I just wanna give you guys a little bit more help, a little bit more tips and tricks. Now, like you saw in the intro, there's a couple different ways to wear this bikini. This is the second way to wear this bikini. Basically, I just flip the top to have it upside down. You can also wear it right side up. And then for the bottoms, I have two separate bottom patterns that you can choose from. One is more full coverage, like this black one, and the other is a little bit more cheeky, like the red one. So I think that's everything. Let's get into the tutorial. All right, so let's talk about how to sew knit fabric. Number one, most important thing, you cannot use a straight stitch to sew knit fabric because when you pull it and stretch it, it's gonna break. We need to use stretch stitches. So if you have a serger, you probably already know that a serger works for knit fabrics, but if you don't have a serger, I wanna give you some options. Option number one is sewing with a zigzag stitch. For a lot of machines, you can actually change the stitch width over here for the zigzag stitch. Making the stitch width small will create a really narrow zigzag stitch, which is great for sewing seams. You can also change the stitch length, which is over here on the right for my machine. Some machines will have preset stitch widths and lengths, and you don't get to customize it as much. It all depends on your machine. So that second row of stitching is my regular zigzag stitch with no alterations made. I'm gonna be using this zigzag stitch to do all the top stitching for my bikini. The second row of zigzag is a really narrow zigzag stitch, which could be used for sewing seams. You can also use a regular zigzag stitch to sew seams, but it's not as clean as a narrow stitch. Another option for sewing seams with your home sewing machine is a lightning stitch. It looks very similar to a zigzag stitch, but it's in the shape of kind of a lightning bolt, which is where it gets its name from. Not all machines have this stitch though, but if you do have that stitch, I would recommend using this for sewing the seams, if you don't have a serger, of course. When sewing with knits, sometimes the interaction between the knit, the presser foot, and the feed dogs can make the fabric a bit distorted. So to fix this, some people like to use a walking foot. I, however, don't like to do that. I like to just make the presser foot tension lower. So normally it's on a five. I like to work with it on a three or a two. Now I am giving you guys a bunch of tips on how to work with knits that are not normally in pattern packs or tutorials. So I'm just giving you guys some extra tips and tricks. But if you're an ultra beginner and you've never worked with knits before, I would still try to do some in-depth research on how to work with knits or read some articles because there is a lot to cover when you're learning how to sew. And a call out if you're using a serger, you wanna set your differential feed to either 1.5 or two. Neutral is what it's normally on when you're working with woven fabrics, but when I'm working with knits, I like to go to 1.5. This helps to make sure that you don't end up with wavy seams. All right, now on to the sewing pattern tutorial. So first off, we're gonna print out our pattern at 100% scale, and you can use the scale on page one and a ruler to double check that printing was done correctly. I like to print out my pattern on cardstock just to make it a little bit more durable. And then I'm going to line everything up using those lettered and numbered diamonds. You don't need to trim the pages. You don't need to overlap the pages. If you don't have borderless, that's okay. You can see I don't as well, but just line it all up, tape it up, and then cut it out. Use the size chart in your instruction pamphlet to make sure you have chosen the correct size and then cut on that corresponding line. First, we're gonna go into the tutorial for the bottoms. So I'm going to take the shell fabric and I'm gonna take the back bottom piece and the front bottom piece and place them right sides together and line them up at those side seams and at the crotch seam. Then I'm just gonna serge it together on all three of those seams. But if you have a zigzag stitch, that will work as well. Just make sure you make it a very narrow zigzag stitch. And here's what the lightning stitch looks like. It can still stretch. Plus when you do it this way, you have the opportunity to press that seam open, which will help reduce the bulk. Here's the bottom shell sewn, and then you wanna do that same thing to the lining fabric as well. 
As you can see, I'm self-lining the red bottoms, but for the black bikini, I'll show you later, I'm using swimmer lining. Now I'm gonna take both the shell and the lining and place them wrong sides together. I'm just gonna pop the lining inside the shell, wrong sides together, and line it up all the way around. I'm gonna use some pins to pin it at the side seams and the crotch seam just to make sure it stays in place. And then I'm going to surge around all of those open edges. So the leg holes and the waist. And when I surge, I'm not going to cut off any fabric. Basically all I'm doing here is combining the shell and the lining so that they can act as if they're one single piece. This is just gonna make it easier for us later on. Now we're gonna go ahead and add elastic. As you can see on the left side of the bottoms, I've added the elastic and you can see it's cinched in a little bit closer than the right side where there's no elastic. So the reason why we do this is because we wanna make sure that bottom is secured to you so that nothing gets exposed while you're swimming. We're gonna attach the elastic to the lining side. So I'm gonna start at the crotch and as I sew the elastic on, I'm going to gently stretch the elastic. You don't wanna stretch it too much, otherwise you're gonna really gather that leg hole opening and we don't want that we want kind of a gentle gather so that it is secure to your body without being too tight so here i've brought the bottoms over to the serger i've placed it in the serger with my elastic i'm going to serge it a little bit just to catch that elastic and once the elastic is caught with the needles i'm going to gently again gently Pull it. See right there, I was aggressively pulling it. That's not what you want because you're gonna create really big gathers. You wanna do a very gentle pull so it barely gathers the fabric. Again, I'm sewing the elastic on the lining side of the bottoms and I'm just going to do this all the way around until I reach the crotch. When I make it all the way around back to the crotch seam, I'm just going to serge off the elastic and then cut off that excess elastic. Now I'm just going to fold over that edge to the wrong side. So we're gonna hide that elastic and I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to top stitch everything in place. So now that elastic is going to be hidden on the inside. And as I'm sewing the seam, I'm going to gently stretch the elastic just so that it's nice and flat as I'm sewing it. That way it will look nice and smooth when you're wearing it. And after you've done that around all of the edges, you are done with the bottoms. Now onto the top of the bikini. Starting out, if you want to have removable padding, make sure you've cut out this little lining section out of the lining of your bikini. And then you're going to serge that edge. Do not cut off any of the fabric when you're serging. We just wanna basically finish that edge. You can also use a zigzag stitch for this. Now take your center front and side front pieces for the top, place them right sides together and serge along that line. And we are going to repeat this for the lining as well. Now we're gonna find the center front panel. The center front panel is the one with more seam allowance at the top there. And we're going to line up the shell and the lining at the neckline. And the neckline of course is found on the centerpiece. So we're going to pin and serge along that neckline. Now we're just going to top stitch that in place. So I'm using a zigzag stitch to top stitch that down so that that neckline area is nice and crisp. Then we're gonna move on to the straps. So for that strap that goes under the bust and around the waist, that is comprised of three separate pieces. So we're going to have to attach those together. I'm going to attach those pieces together like you would for continuous bias tape. And I'll show you an easier way in a second. But to attach those straps together, place them together at a 90 degree angle like this, edge to edge, and then take a ruler and make a diagonal mark right through the center of the overlapped pieces. This mark is where you're going to sew. And when I fold it down like this, you can see how that is going to create a nice straight piece of bias tape. I'm just going to trim that seam allowance to about half an inch before pressing it open. The reason why we create bias tape like this is just to reduce the bulk. That way it's not super bulky all in one spot. You can also just attach your pieces like this, just sewing it with a regular half inch seam allowance. It'll just be a little bit bulkier. It looks totally fine. This is easier to create, but I definitely prefer the other way. Now to create all those straps. Basically, again, I'm going to treat it like it's bias tape. So I'm going to fold all of those straps into quarters. I'm gonna fold it in half first and press it to find that center line before then taking the two edges, folding them towards the center line and pressing that as well. And then again, folding it in half to finally create a quartered piece of bias tape. Do that to all of your straps and then we're ready to attach it to the bikini. 
Again, I'm just attaching it like it's bias tape. So I'm going to open up the bias tape and place it right sides together with the bikini top right sides together. And I'm going to pin in that first little divot, in that first little crease. And that is where I'm going to sew using a lightning stitch. Now fold over the bias tape so it completely hides that seam allowance. If you find it difficult to fold over, you can trim down your seam allowance slightly, but don't trim it down too much. Just make it a little bit easier to fold around. It should look like this before we top stitch it down. Now optional, if you want the hanging edges of the straps to be nice and finished, you can use your iron to press the edge under half an inch before folding it back up. However, this does make it pretty bulky so you can choose to finish it like this or you could leave the very edge unfinished i'll show you the two compared to each other in a second it's personal preference on one hand it looks a little bit nicer to be finished but it also does make it pretty bulky so it's up to you anyways now i'm just going to top stitch that bias tape in place using a zigzag stitch and when I get to the end of the bikini top, I'm going to continue top stitching all the way down the strap to finish off that strap. I'm going to constantly check to make sure that strap is nice and lined up just so it looks nice and clean. But yeah, just top stitch all the way down the strap until you reach the end. And if you're doing removable padding, all of these steps are the exact same. You just have that little additional cutout right there but nothing changes. So I just wanted to show you guys what that looks like. I'm attaching the bias tape the exact same way. You're just left with a little hole so that you're able to insert your padding later on. Now we're going to add the bias tape to the underbust area in the exact same way we just did for the side of the bikini. First though, I'm going to find the center of that very long strap and place it between the two bikini pieces. I'm going to pin it in place and I'm going to keep in mind that I don't want the bikini spaced super far apart at the center front. The maximum distance I want between those two bikini pieces is about half an inch. So I would recommend between a quarter inch and half an inch of space because as you stretch the bikini on your body, that space is gonna get even wider. And after you sew it on with the lightning stitch and before you top stitch everything into place, I would just double check to make sure you like the placement of your bikini and strap. That way you can easily seam rip it and reposition it before you top stitch it. But yeah, after you do that, you are done with your bikini top. All right, guys, that is how you sew this halter neck bikini. Again, if you wanna get this pattern for a discounted rate, you can use the code bikini until tomorrow at midnight for 30% off. And the pattern is the first link down below. Let me know how you would wear this bikini and what fabrics you would make it out of. But anyways, if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up because it's the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. And if you make this and you post a picture, be sure to tag me so I can go hype you up. Oh, and make sure that you're subscribed with the notification bells turned on because you don't wanna miss out on discounts in the future. All right, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.